Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. So I'm filming this one whilst just heading to work. Before you start this video I want to let you know that I am a very huge fan of Evernote and this video comes from my own experience but as well as an experience that I want to share with everyone and hopefully benchmark some of the issues that I'm having with Evernote Web as well as kind of put up a sort of petition for everyone out there that can, you know, be able to put it towards Evernote. Um, because I think there's some small flaws with the specifications of Evernote Web. Um, not so much the design, but I think that they could be changed and improved. I'm a big fan of Evernote. This isn't me calling out Evernote for any reason, but I just wanted to share some of my experiences. So I'm gonna jump over to the computer and show you some of the Evernote Web things that I don't like. So Evernote Web is something that I have been using for around three or four years now and something that I continue to use across my day because I am a Chromebook user uh, and for those who don't know Chromebooks essentially don't allow you to download applications. Although there is an Android app that runs for Chromebook, uh, I tend not to use it. So let's get stuck in. So one of the first things that is most cumbersome when using the Evernote Reminders application is when you start a new note and you want to essentially put a reminder on the note and you simply hit this button in the top left hand corner. When you click Notify Me, it brings up a display of timings you want to bring, uh, uh, timings and dates that you want to choose. If you click on the 8th of Friday the 8th of January for example, if I click that it would instantly go off it and bring it up during the day in the 8th of January. However, I have to go back in, change the date, and choose the time again in order to access um, the actual time, which is a bit of a pain because if I want to kind of uh, change the, de the actual specific time it lands uh, as a reminder, I have to go back into it and actually tweak that unless I want the default 8 a.m., which is a bit of an issue. So that's one of the kind of initial uh, annoying things about the service. The next thing I want to just demonstrate is uh, if I create another note here, in the previous uh, in the previous Evernote web experience, um, what you could do is you can multi-select uh, here. So if you press shift, uh, I think it was shift or control, uh, you could select both of them at the same time and essentially be able to you know, put multiple notes inside a notebook or delete them or, or even change the name of them uh, or merge them too. Uh, in the new version, um, you are unable to do this, which is sadly. So I just tried doing that right now. Uh, and a lot of people have been kind of annoyed because a lot of specification seems to be gone away in the multi-select feature. So that's one thing that is slightly negative about that. The next thing is that the Evernote web client is actually fairly slow uh, when you're using it. Uh, I used the previous one, it seemed to have a lot more functionality and work is slightly snappier. I mean, I'm usually in good network connectivity most of the time and it seems to be quite slow. The next thing up is, as well is um, when I want to add images to my Evernote notes, uh, I tend to have to go into, and if I want to add multiple images at one given time, I have to go into attach files, choose a file individually. So it's a bit of a tedious process. You have to individually choose the files. You can't multi-attach files. Uh, you can drag them in, which is a positive um, over that experience. So that's really handy. But being able to add uh, multiple amounts of documents, uh, multiple amounts of documents and any attachments in general, it doesn't have to be images, is a bit of a problem. Additionally, on the experience on the web, you don't have the native feature of being able to record through the computer's microphone, which is a bit of a problem because obviously a lot of people could potentially use this during lectures, etc., and just kind of like turn this on uh, while they're doing that. Um, obviously, a lot of people will have Windows and uh, Mac computers and be able to download that. But for those who kind of want the on-the-go experience, um, then this is kind of a bit of a problem. I understand that that's probably something they don't want to focus on because it's quite a heavy tool for a web app and might slow it down, but something that is a bit of a pain. The next thing that is not so great is that um, Evernote Web syncs uh, a bit differently than the Mac and PC version. So it syncs by refresh um, and it doesn't sync by actually being able to push a button and it pops up. You have to refresh the page 
uh, and completely get rid of your your whatever you're working on, um, which is a bit of a pain. Um, and you have to click done on that note as well, which is a bit of a pain too. Um, the next thing that I finally want to touch on is that it's got no snippet design. Uh, and what I mean by this is, for example, if you had, um, if you wanted to see all of your, uh, your, if you want to see all of your notes uh, at a glance uh, in the kind of format that they have on the Mac version, and I'll just flash up a image here. So like that, uh, they don't have that design. The only optionality you get is to show images and show text. Uh, which is nice, but it's not phenomenal. So kind of customizable uh, views aren't really accepted in the Evernote web version. Anyway, guys, that's just a kind of snippet of what I want to show you. I want to thoughts on Evernote web or Evernote web clipper in the comments below. I'll read all of them and definitely share the best ones. So thank you very much, everyone. Make sure you have a great week. Keep productive and I'll see you guys very soon.